How are you booktube? My name's Maria and welcome to my channel MH Books and to a Friday read. Reads. I have filmed this more than once so I still can't say simple things like Friday reads. So maybe we just let this one go. This one's going to be bad takes. I cannot say the name of the tribe in one of the books. Um, I keep blanking but you know what I think we should just go with this take. You're happy enough. Um, the problem is I have to upload this one now or I feel like I have to upload this one and this this Happy Friday Reads as I have no chance of filming one for the next couple of weekends as I shall be otherwise occupied but hopefully I shall be vlogging them instead. Fortunately it's also meant to rain and most of those vlogs are supposed to be happening outside so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, this is me with, with curtains closed, by the way, and obviously a ring light. You can see the ring light. Um, but you can still see the amount of sun hitting the bed. It is extraordinarily sunny today, and it's going to rain on Saturday. And it's going to be cold. It's going to be 15 degrees C, which Alexa just told me, and in another take that you've not seen, that is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be the warmest temperature. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we shall film as best we can the vlogs. If not, I'll just do a reading vlog. Okay. I do have books I'm reading. Where do I put the books I'm reading? Oh, yeah. I have, I'm bringing um, paperbacks with me because it takes a while to get the, to the vlog locations and so no heavy books so the paperbacks are coming with me um if you're just watching this it is going with me we'll see if i read it um so yeah i've already started the black girl by the way lads and that's it's 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 okay it's intriguing it's intriguing so should we do what i've actually read and finished so this one appeared before um in other versions of this video but it also appeared in my major tag i hadn't quite finished at the stage it is tony morrison's sula during the mid-year rush or freak out tag whatever it's called i told you my brain is tired i thought this was going to be my favorite for the first six months and it still is so we're on the first of july it is now officially my favorite for the first six months of the year 2021 I am falling in love with Toni Morrison from one book, which I hope is okay. It's like love at first book. And that should be a tag question for something. Let's make up a tag somebody. <laughs> Just credit me that question. Love at first book. <laughs> Name a love at first book author. Um, I am so sorry. I was already, you know, I'm sad that when she died, but I'm so sorry now. <laughs> She's not around to write anymore. This is amazing stuff. Um, Sula is a story about a girl called Sula, a, sh a man called Shadrick who's who who is um suffering from post traumatic stress from um war. Um, the uh her friend Nell. I told you I was blanking, didn't I? And a town called Bottom. That's on the top of the hill. This is where I start to love this book. The town called Bottom that's on the top of the hill, which is a nigger and a white person's joke, or a negro and a white person's joke. I can't remember how she actually puts it. Um, she puts it some way. Um, but it's, it has a story attached to it as well. Um, and all the town folk who live in Bottom um, now has a different kind of lifestyle to Sula in the end. She goes the old, more old fashioned married route. And Sula has a little bit more of a laissez faire life, let's put it that way. Um, S Sula's history um, in this book is well written to she, her grandmother's backstory, her mother's backstory, are extremely important to the formation of Sula and her desperate desire for love, um, which she knows when she finds. Um, unlike poor Nell, who has to work at it a little bit better um, to work it out where um, where true love lies. But what I really enjoyed about this book, not just its poetic writing, but the way that Sula is almost 
portrayed in a magical realism kind of bent wherever she goes things happen so she arrives in town and robins fall out of the sky um she goes away i won't tell you why for a certain reason and um extraordinary events happen um to the townsfolk extraordinary events um this town is amazing and it and and it's progressing over the novel as well it's going from a town that was set up by a negro population to one that's been um bought out by white people um and i'm using the term negro because it goes with the the period in the 1920s to um the 1940s um but obviously we would use the term black at the um nowadays but um to keep it colloquial with the terminology that would have been used during that time period um i cannot stress how much i loved um tony morrison's characters on this her her her, her character of the town her her bent towards magic reads but never quite making it extraordinary things that happen she uses foreshadowing everywhere in the book and yet when it happens you're shocked and it's really really short um i cannot stress how much i love this book um and yeah it deals it deals with it deals with everything it deals with um with with race with with everything that it was just and and written so poetically. I did also listen to about two. I read it in this completely, and I also listened to about two thirds of it, um, on a borrow box version of um, an audiobook, and I told you I'm liking. <laughs> What's the word for audiobook? And Toni Morrison's read it, and her voice is amazing. Unfortunately, the only problem was. I am partially deaf. I cannot wear hearing aids because I have to put masks on at the moment all the time and take them off and they would pull off hearing aids. And her, Tony Morrison's voice is low in tone and it's a tone that I can't hear very well. So I couldn't really hear her if I was out walking anywhere, which is really annoying. It's so frustrating. <laughs> And it was at home. I wanted to read the actual book again. So I'm definitely, definitely, definitely reading this book. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I hope that one day I'll reread it and I'll be able to explain better um, in, in better terminology of um, what I thought about this. I'm half convinced if we ever get to go anywhere and uh, meet real people again, because I don't want to do it online, I might go and do some type of course where you learn to read review books properly. <laughs> just with those ones, just with the really good ones, you know, who deserve somebody to at least make some mediocre kind of effort. And um, the next book I read was MC Beaton's um, Death of a Charming Man. Um, now, well, I'm going to tell you about this book, which I, this is probably the 10th book and I've mentioned them a couple of times. So if you've somehow come across my channel new, most, there's very few people come across me new, um, because I think you have to have lots of likes and subscribes or something like that for that to happen. Or you need to be fairly new as well. New channels always get lots of new, new views, according to the algorithm. Um, <laughs> But if you are new, like, or for some reason you've never seen me talk about this book, um, or these books, this series of books, it's a series of books, um, with a policeman called Hamish Macbeth, set in the Highlands of Scotland. He's a Highlander. Um, if you watch the TV series, he's actually from Glasgow, so he's a Lowlander in the TV series. There is a TV series as well. Um, but <laughs> I, as I always say, the name of the person who dies is in the title. Not necessarily this time. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Hamish Beck and Be Macbeth in this one does not come across as a nice guy. This was published in 1994. I think it's about the 10th in the series. He is extraordinarily sexist. He does not get why a secretary doesn't want to make a cup of tea. Just for him. Because he wants a cup of tea. Why she doesn't go around running around making it. He thinks it's the same as filing or or um, 
typing up a letter. Um, to be honest, in 1994, everybody was typing their own letters too. So it is slightly outdated. Um, <laughs> 1989 I was using a dictaphone to get a secretary to write a letter for me um but yeah never ever ever so I worked from 1989 in offices never would I have ever asked anybody to make me a cup of tea or a cup of coffee we took turns and that was the end of it and that included the boss and any place that does that <laughs> so <laughs> one little grape <laughs> is that okay um yeah it was okay there was a, there's an on again off again relationship in this um with um it's priscilla isn't it in, in, in this one and it has its normal on again off again turns um i kind of know where this one goes the relationship goes in the long run so <laughs> there's no spoilers for me in this um but yeah it was okay it's not the best of them um, I'm working my way through. I'm trying to get up as far as the Highland Christmas, um, which I think is about book 16 and a half or something like that. I have another six books to go plus Highland Christmas. All I want to do is read the Highland Christmas one on Christmas. So that's my aim. And also to catch up on some of the series that I'm reading. Okay. Um, now, Barkeeper's Daughter. This is responsible for me going holy moly. Because I want to film this in one take. I want to make this a bit more of a chat a little bit more relaxed um than kind of um when i try to cut now i also have to remember I ha when i try to cut one of the reasons i do that is to shorten the video <laughs> getting long this one is the fire keeper's daughter has appeared before um it's angelina boulet who writes it and she's based the character on herself um to a certain extent and to a certain instant that happened to her when she was a teenager a character is danny's or danny who is um a, a mixture of um her father is native american or her mother is white american and she, now this is where i get stuck so i cannot pronounce this tribe you think i could do it maybe i can just oh, oh so you're always going to see that can i can you see the name of the tribe can i do that Okay, here it is. So I'm not. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna have to write it on the screen. So much for making this easy. So, Ubuichi tribe. But anyway, she is being recruited by the feds into finding um, whether some could because she is quite knowledgeable on um, native plants and plants used in native medicines. Um, whether some mushrooms are being used to cook meth and being sold on the res reservation and outside the reservation as it happens as well. Um, the story, um, the mystery story, it, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. It could have done a little bit better. It could have been a bit better and a little bit better put together and the pacing could have been worked a little bit better um but um the native american background as in because this is angelina's bully's real background and the prayers to creator and all that are, are fabulous absolutely 100 percent read this book just for that bit because it's just extraordinary. Uh, um, it's the best that I've actually read so far um, on that line. Um, problem in the, um, for, um, there's a little bit of a, like this is where I say like, I'm tired, I can't remember the words. Trigger warning, that's the word. And I'm not sure this bit was dealt with very well. For sexual violence so sexual violence in this book to one of the characters and i'm not happy 100 percent at all with the way it was treated but overall i mean I, again this is why you a technically too so if you yeah i'm not 100 percent happy with um i think you have to be extremely careful when you're going to actually include sexual violence actually happening in a book 
whether how you treat the after effects of it. I don't think it was handled strongly enough. Um, and it's hard to do in something that's supposed to be a crime thriller as well. So I do give her that. Um, but overall, I did enjoy it. I would definitely read her next book. Um, I think the production company who, who designed this, who commissioned the person to design this, because I don't, there's no name. So whoever did this, oh, it's, it is, it's by Moses Lunnan. So uh, I can I can't see his name, so I have to put it underneath. I just think, Moses, your cover design is feckin' amazing. Um, sorry for the countries where that word is rude. Sorry. <laughs> Finished Tanya French's The Trespass. I was listening to in the car. The buddies are just going to go berserk because they've decided it's lunchtime or dinner time. Sorry, it's evening. <laughs> um, Tanya French's The Trespass. It means I have actually finished a series this year. Hooray! Um, the Garter, um, the, the murder, the Garda squad, the murder squad of the Gardaí in Ireland. Um, this is her um, sixth and last book in that in that series until she writes another one. And I don't think she she's been writing standalones. This one has my favorite Tana French character everywhere. It appears in my mid year tag. Um, it is. <sighs> Detective Conway, um, how do, how do, how do we put it? She gets her, she, she is her own worst enemy. Okay. Um, she's the second one that, that, that she's written. Um, she is, she is very lucky. She had the case that she had, or she would have made a bad life choice let's put it that way um she is investigating together with steve steve conway um the murder of a woman who is found in stony bear on the north side of dublin um and it's assumed to be domestic crime um she does not or jacinta conway or detective conway does not get on very well with um her squad and some of that is their fault and some of that is definitely, definitely her fault. Um, and she does not know what we know because if you read the previous book, book five, you know about Steve and Conway, her partner, and you know what he really thinks of her. Um, and she doesn't have the advantage of what we know <laughs> in, in these books, which is a shame. These books, do have their murder investigation, but they're really about the characters, the detectives and the protectives um, overarching um, story. So she does, for me, have a satisfactory ending in her character arc where she starts in the beginning of this story because it only happens over a few days. Um, this, the murder mystery itself, um, yeah, it was, it was a, for a ton of French, it was pretty good. To be honest, um, and I think this was definitely be my favorite of the detective, um, of the murder squad. So, I mean, it does have uh, a huge advantage in that it has a female detective mind, um, and that I just kind of had a kind of a crush on her, I suppose, because she is so tough, so tough, but she treats everybody in the world the same. <laughs> um, so yeah, I totally loved her. Um, then a quickie that I had to write down because it'd be on my phone. I just borrowed from Burrow Box because it's so busy in work. I had to do this thing where I had to put client names together with pieces of middle metal, medical equipment in order to reclaim the VAT or the tax off them back from the government. And it takes forever and it's really boring. So I listened to an audio book and it was The Haunting of, of the Haunting by Margaret May. So just, just call it simply called The Haunting. And it's a children's book where our main protagonist is eight years old. And he is haunted by his great uncle, he thinks. Um, but that's not what's really happening. Um, and for a children's book, it wasn't bad. Um, I think I gave it three stars. It has 
I've read loads. So for a child, this would be amazing, by the way, because it was like, oh my God, I never saw that twist coming if you were a child. But I've read so many of these haunting books at this stage that I kind of know there's only about six different endings that they can have. Um, and it did pick one of the more unusual ones. Um, and it was interesting. Um, I just have to give it that. <laughs> I think I get uh, I did say I gave it three stars. Did I tell you I was tired before I started this? I am still reading this, um, which I should finished by now. Um, so we are not ourselves on Matthew Thomas. I didn't know what this book was about, by the way. Um, this is a book a buddy read it with Alan of Big Hard Books and Classics. So I just have to put the title name because I'm too tired to check. Um I um that much true. There you go. And I did tag things. Um I didn't know what it was about, so I was curious and then I accidentally got spoiled on Instagram. And seemingly everybody knows that this book was about, so I obviously just missed when it was out and everybody was talking about it. Um so if you haven't <laughs> And, or you didn't when you read it, you read it and you didn't read it when you read it. Oh, you didn't read it when you read it. You didn't know what it was about when you read it. And you, could you tell me what you, And but you have read it. <laughs> Can you tell me what you thought about it? I'll wait through, just in case. <laughs> Did you work out what was happening? Um, it, yeah, um, and I should have too. Um, it starts off with the story of Eileen and her emigrant parents. Um, and her childhood and the alcoholism in her family and their Irish emigrant emigrated from Ireland, immigrated into the US. So the Irish immigrants, because it's set in the US. Um, and actually, that's the first time I've read an Irish immigrant story, um, but it wasn't really a, a, a nearly as compelling as when we go further in time. And we're just with Eileen and her husband and her child. And we're just living an American um, family story. Um, and it's compelling. Eileen marries um, a researcher. Um, so I probably have more common with her than for him than her. Because um, <laughs> I have a PhD um, in research as well. And I just... Can I just say it's compelling, but I haven't finished it, so let's let's leave it to when I finish. This will have to come with me a little bit on my wagon as well. And it's a very big book. Um, it's a very big book. What am I going to do? And then it's Friday reads, isn't it? So yeah, did I? I said I was still reading this. I I I've said I started this. Yeah, no, and it's quite good at the moment. There we go. Okay. Whatever you're reading, I hope you're enjoying it. This is now 23 minutes. I have to upload. So um, until next time. And just to be honest, look after yourselves. Too many people have not been doing that recently. So um, just, um, what does Kelly say? Books I'm not reading. And be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Whatever. Um, yeah, just, just, just be good. Okay. Bye-bye.